Welcome back guys to episode 18 of Mortal Realms Monday on the Road Painter channel. So today we're taking a look at the Sigmarite Mausoleum as with issue 18 we didn't get any new models um, and so I've decided to show you guys how I went about painting the front gate of the mausoleum here. So I'm going to take a mix of Dawnstone Grey, uh, Eschen Grey and Mechanicus Standard Grey. And when I say mix I actually mean a combination, I'm not mixing the three colours together, sorry. I've primed the model in um, just a straight grey primer so that I can lay these colours down over the top. And all I'm going to do is pick off certain points of the, um, the brickwork the paving slabs and some of the other areas with these different greys. So first of all I'm going in with the um, the Mechanicus Standard Grey and I'm using this for the column as you can see here and also the uh, the top part of it as well along with the the top uh, slates that sit on top of the wall and uh, sort of curve down that bit and then go over the arch. I also take this over there. Um, as always, I'm using slightly thin down paint, um, so I'll probably do a couple of coats on each of these. So this is the, uh, the slope bit I was on about. Also along the top of this area here, around the arch obviously, and then the same on the other side, mirroring it basically. On the inside here, coming down on there I think I later decide to do that in metal so if you're following along don't worry about doing the uh, the inner bits there and then obviously on the other side same thing all the way around ignore that first bit paint that bit and then the arch over the top and then obviously back down the same on the other side so once done with that this is where I'm at as you can see it gives us a relatively dark grey uh, just picking off around the edges there and I did leave the the middle of the gate area for the um, the metal that I will do later on all right so now I'm taking the dawnstone and I'm going to pick off all the areas that I want in the the light gray here so that's down these columns all of the the brickwork here and I'll use the Eschen Grey to pick out um, the odd brick or two afterwards. Um, the same with this and down here. I'm not too worried about getting in between the skulls as this is has been primed with a grey primer anyway. So it is grey in there and it just adds a little bit of difference especially once we add the, the shade into it later. So I'll just get this uh, this coated in the, the Dawnstone here and then we'll uh, jump on to the next stage. You'll also note that I'm not painting between the bricks, only the surface of the bricks. Um, that's again so that you have that slightly lighter mortar um, between the bricks that will um, show up once the, the shading is in there. So we'll jump on and see what we do with the, the Eschen Grey in the next step. Okay, so I've decided while I'm at this stage, I'll go in and uh, paint this area. So here is the, uh, the Mechanica Standard Grey again, and I'm just picking out random bricks here. Obviously, if you follow it along, you can pick out anything you want. But obviously, I get all of the inside of the gate done on the ground there, and then a few of these bricks here. And then I'll do the same with the Eschen Grey and the uh, the Dawnstone as well. Again, thin down paints and just uh, just picking out the odd brick here and there with the, the varying grades really, nice and simple. Nice easy, relaxing paint job this one. So what we'll do, I'll skip on uh, to just after I've got the all the grades down and then we'll see what we do with the next steps. Alright, so now that I've got the base greys applied, I'm next going to take a 50-50 mix of Mornfang Brown and Death Guard Green. 
and this is just to um, light it up a little bit. Um, I think that this gives a similar colour to the old snake bike leather, if any of you uh, remember that. But basically, we're just going uh, looking for a, a lighter brown. At this, you know, at this point, you can use any any brown you want. Now, I was considering um, applying PVA glue to this, and then some sand and gravel and bits around the edge. But I didn't want to go too complicated with it. You know, it's only a terrain piece. Um, it's not the the main focus of the board when playing. I don't play much anyway. Um, I'm more of a painter than a gamer these days. So I just waited to to get this painted up. So uh, nothing too complicated with this piece. Just some basic colours, some washes, and then some highlights. So we'll be back in just a bit once I've got this uh, brown laid down. So next we're going to take some corn red and as I mentioned in the previous uh, building video or yeah the building video for the mausoleums I wanted to tie them in a little bit and for that I'm using the spikes on the tops of the walls and the buildings in this corn red um, so that they're all matching and tied in even if the walls end up slightly different colours. Um, I'm also picking out um, a few roses here and there in this corn red and then the other ones will be done in a pink and so that we've got just a little bit of uh, subtle variation between the two so all I'm doing here is just showing you guys you know what roses I'm painting so that if you're following along you can uh, you know do something very similar so we we'll just jump on and uh, take a look at what we've got once all the uh, the red is done. And welcome back. So I'm now going to take some pink horror and apply this to all the remaining roses around the the uh, the gate frame. So that's the uh, the ones along the top, as well as the ones that grow up. Um, from the ground around the the graves and that and I have noticed uh, that my camera's got a smudge on the lens there unfortunately I've got a few videos that I've um, filmed and so that's going to be there for the next couple of videos but I have now sorted it out at the time of editing this one so uh, apologies for that there guys so obviously I'm just going around same as I did with the the red picking out all the roses that I want done with this pink here obviously that's all the roses that are left just being careful not to get it on the the, uh, the, the spaces between the roses and also not on the the green leaves uh, you'll also notice that when I was doing the the greys I did the large skull there in the center um, the same on both sides with the um, the dawnstone gray um, I, obviously it's not a real size skull so it's not going to be a real skull I was debating whether or not to do all the skulls in this as um, stone sculpted skulls but I thought no we'll have something stand out a little bit different and go with them as uh, real skulls so they uh, they're going to get a coating of um, some sandry dust and some uh, some bone bone colour. So we'll just uh, jump on ahead and uh, take a look at this next step. Yeah, and welcome back, guys. So I'm now going to take some warpstone glow and some cabalite green. And I'm going to start with the Cabalite Green and painting in the uh, the leaves between all of the the flowers here, the roses. So unfortunately with this piece there are a lot of leaves, lots of roses, lots of skulls. So it is a very tedious piece in terms of painting um, just due to the fact that there are 
lots of tiny details that you've got to make sure that you catch because if you miss one or two they're going to stand out against everything else at the end so uh, it does take a little bit of time now for these I am using an army painter detail brush um, this is just one of their their cheaper slightly cheaper brushes I think it may be one of their older ones um, obviously you don't want too big a brush going in for these small details and again this paint is thin down um, a correction on the paint this is actually the uh, the warpstone glow uh, what I wanted to do first was the same as the roses picking off the majority with this and then going back in with the cabalite green um, picking off a few more with the, the different colour so uh, just jump ahead and I think next up will be the skulls alright so welcome back guys and there it is Ushapti bone is the colour I was trying to think of and for some reason I was getting the old bleached bone stuck in my head and I knew it wasn't that but I could not think of the uh, the new one so this is a combination of Zandru dust and ble uh, Ushapti bone and again with the Ushapti bone I'm just going in and picking the majority of what I want and then I'll go back through and finish off the rest with the uh, the Zandri dust just so we got a slightly darker skull um, you could maybe use something like pallid witch flesh or something lighter than the Ushapti bone instead um, but I just wanted some slightly slightly darker skulls now you'll notice that I'm not doing any shading yet um, with this piece I decided to get all my flat base colours down and then do all the washes in one go so that everything has time to dry um, you know everything dries at the same time as the amount of wash that I put into this piece um, it does take around about half an hour to 40 minutes to dry and uh, got a stray hair kind of across the camera there so you guys so obviously we've got all these skulls around here that I am now marking off so you guys can see we've got the three across there and the rose on both sides as well as the skull that was up in the roses there the one on the top there I'm leaving the same as the one on the other hourglass um, and the ones at the bottom I'm also leaving the reason being is we are going to do these in a, um, a bronze look so they're going to get a coating of uh, bronze looking paint with some nylock oxide for weathering on top of that so we'll just jump on ahead uh, to where I finish the skulls and we'll see what's the next step will be and welcome back guys so now we're going to take some Balthazar gold and I'm using this for all my uh, bronze look I think it gives uh, one of the better looks for a base paint of bronze so as I'm showing you here the areas that I'm going to do are the uh, the hourglasses and the skulls on the top the little shield embossments on the right there as well as the uh, the skull and the wreath either side of the gate at the bottom and then the same with the other one on the other side there the shield and also the spikes on top of the uh, the gate and wall here as well as all this cross along the the top and then on the other side it's the same thing um, so obviously we haven't got the hourglasses there they're the the three skulls instead but it's still the two at the bottom as well as the shield and the uh, the embossment bit here on the two graves and obviously the uh, the other side of the cross on top of the gate there so again we'll uh, all right, so we'll uh, jump ahead and take a look at the next step once this is finished I uh, do hope I'm not rushing this too fast for you guys obviously um, I don't want to give you full one hour videos or two hour videos where I'm you know literally sitting there just painting 
um, I think that might get a bit boring for you guys unless that is what you want to see then let me know in the comments and I'll you know I'll see try and uh, improve my videos but otherwise yeah I'm just looking to sort of show you how I do things and uh, in the case of this video keep it short and just show you where to place place those colors uh, if you wanting to follow along for a quick easy paint up of your your buildings so we'll jump on ahead and uh, see what's coming up next okay so I've now got all of the base painting done and now it's time for the wash now for this I'm taking the lid off of my pot that's because the lid for this one is damaged and I'm using a medium shade brush and I am going to literally swamp this in the wash um, I think just brushing it on doesn't give enough of a coat in obviously I'm not letting it you know completely pull up in all the details on the skulls but the area of between and around them I do want to get quite a bit of pooling in there um, just so we can really dirty up this stone um, before dry brushing it so you'll see here what I'm doing is really pulling it down into the um, the gaps between the brickwork there really trying to sort of leave a, a heavy amount in there um, if it starts to flood over onto the brickwork then I just uh, sort of pull it away and pull it down following the the lines of that mortar between the the bricks and then obviously with the stone I don't want too much on the surface but I do want to give it a staining so I'm just uh, brushing it over and then again going back in and filling in those gaps now I do apply this over the entire piece um, all over the graves the mud the uh, the archway I think the only thing I don't touch with this is the crow at the top um, and that's just because I finish him uh, you know much more towards the end um, also the roses I do believe that I left them as well as I will go in with caribou crimson but I did try to apply some of this between and around the roses um, just to darken that area up the same as I've done with everything else here so you can see you know not not being too careful with it just slopping it on and then uh, removing anywhere I think there's too much excess Obviously, we can see here that there's a bit of a blob there. And so I remove it and then apply some more to get it down in them, the gaps between the, the stonework. So we'll jump on ahead and come back once this has dried. All right, and welcome back, guys. So I'm now going to take some Mechanica's Standard Grey. And you'll notice that the, the wash left this very dark and grimy looking now you could leave it like that if that's the look you were going for um, I wanted something a little bit cleaner so all I'm doing with this is essentially it's the same colors dry brushing over over themselves because they've got that heavy dark wash on them it works as a, a natural highlight rather than using a lighter color as you would normally so obviously being careful not to get it onto the lighter brickwork here is obviously it's a darker color um, there's barely any paint on this brush it is a as I said a dry brush so I'm just going backwards or forwards and just uh, trying to sort of tone down or brighten up some of that that mud look that the uh, the wash has left behind so this is the as I said the Mechanica standard grey and uh, we'll jump on ahead and uh, take a look at the the other colors I do for the the other dry brushing okay so next up I take uh, some Dawnstone and using the exact same dry brush technique I'm going to go over all of the brickwork here including some of the tops of the uh, the administratum grey as you can see here just on the top edges where the light would catch the most um, I don't use down the the vertical edge too much 
So obviously this is just backwards or forwards over everything. I'm not too worried about getting it on the skulls as they'll have a highlight over the top of them anyway. And uh, all this will do is just give that highlight a bit of a, a brighter, brighter look to it. So obviously with any dry brushing technique, if you're not sure with it, the idea is nice and simple. Dip your brush, your bristles into uh, some paint, not thin down, just straight out of the pot paint. You can either do it straight from the pot or apply it to a palette, but don't add any water. Um, the idea is to keep the paint essentially dry. Um, wipe off as much of the excess as you can on a clean paper towel, or at least not a damp one. Um, so a dry paper towel. And uh, when there's barely any paint left coming off, you can then take your brush and just go backwards and forwards over your uh, your model. And all it does is pick off any of those hard sort of raised edges, corners and things like that and uh, apply some, the paint there. If you notice that you're getting streaks um, or any kind of blobbing on the surface, then it means you've still got too much paint on the bristles. So again, just go back to that paper towel and... Uh, remove some more paint. So as you can see the dry brushing and highlighting has uh, lightened up the brickwork on this piece a lot now. Um, it's a lot less dingy looking. So uh, we'll skip on and uh, take a look at the next step. All right, so next up we're going to take some Abaddon Black and this is going to paint up anything that is going to be metal. So that's the two gates here that I have um, damaged a little bit um, to make them look a bit battered and worn, as well as the area down here. So that's the metal looking part. It does have a couple of, um, a few studs going up it so you can tell that it, it is metal. So that is the thin piece here and uh, the, the bit that I painted under there as well as the piece that goes around just under the, the roses here. And again, this is slightly thinned down and uh, yeah, I will go over with a couple of layers. Um, also, we'll be doing the crow that sits on top of the cross at the top. So rather than bore you with uh, a bit more painting, we'll skip on ahead and uh, take a look at the, the next stage. Right, so back to highlights and next up is some pink horror and this is going to be used for all the roses. Now I'm using um, the Army Painters uh, small dry brush for this as it is a slightly, it's a chiseled edge so it's uh, got an angle to it which makes it brilliant for dry brushing uh, smaller areas like the roses here. So I'm just coming across the top of all of them, including the darker red ones. Um, it's the effect, uh, you know, the highlight doesn't matter too much. I have gone and applied a wash into these roses, um, but I have lost the footage. I do th believe that I apply a second wash in them anyway. Um, but just in case not, that is a wash of Caraberg Crimson that went into those. Um, and again, with a just a regular um, brush, so the Citadel standard brush, um, I just applied a small drop of the the wash into each rose. And obviously, as that dries, the water evaporates, the paint settles down, and that just uh, you know fills in the the recesses between the the petals. And then the same with the the leaves I went in with some um, Athonian camo shade and highlighted uh, sorry shade though shaded those as well and you can see here I'm also doing the the spikes on top with the uh, the scream of pink as well or the pink hover sorry just to give that a little bit of highlight on the tops of each of those Okay, so with the roses and the all the red highlighted, I'm now going back in with some uh, 
pallid witch flesh i do believe this is so it's obviously slightly lighter than the ashapti bone and i'm just picking off the uh, the surfaces and the the peak the raised edges of the skulls here so it's obviously the cheekbones under the eye socket the the brow above the eyes and a little bit of the the dome of the skull um, I do use that on all of them uh, regardless of whether or not they were done with the Xandra dust or the bleach bone as the highlight will essentially you know look almost the same so obviously going through every skull on here uh, it does take a little bit of time and quite a bit of patience but do take your time do be patient with it and uh, the end result is definitely something to be proud of right so now to take some iron breaker and get working on those iron gates and the surroundings so just the same as I did with the black I'm going in with the iron breaker um, this is slightly thinned down just because my paint is um, starting to dry out a bit as a few years old this one um, so it's thickened up a little bit so I do apply just a little bit of water but if yours is a relatively new pot with metals you shouldn't have to um, they do apply quite nicely straight from the pot but if you do have to apply some water try not to go too much as it will separate the pigments and they'll lose that sort of shiny effect to them so obviously all the same as we did with the black um, with exception to the crow obviously unless you're looking for a silver crow but uh, that's all the way around the the edge here and don't forget the the under area of that that overarch and then the same with the gates now obviously I haven't attached my gates here because I will be positioning them at certain uh, specific angles that I wanted. If your gates are attached then um, assuming you've attached them closed this shouldn't be too difficult to do. You could go straight in with a, a base brush from Citadel and uh, paint them a lot quicker with that just by going you know straight up and down. Try not to flick the brush too much as if you have too much paint on there you're going to start spraying it across the piece but you should be able to do that with a, a base brush quite easily. So we'll just jump on to uh, the next stage and we'll be back in just a sec. Right, so now I'm gonna take some moot green and this is for highlighting all of the green leaves. And again with this, I'm using that uh, detail brush and all I'm doing is just picking off the the V shape on the majority of the leaves otherwise just the the top edge depending on the angle of the leaf as I said earlier um, these leaves did have a, a wash of uh, Athonian camo shade on each one so they do have that darker recess and all I'm doing now is just picking off some highlights just to bring them forward and make them pop a little bit so you will jump up on her head and uh, come back once these are done okay so here I'm just highlighting some of the edges of the crow with some eschen grey um, I prefer the eschen grey for highlighting on black as it has that slightly uh, blue tint to it and you know I, I just think that having a blue highlight on black is better than just a straight grey um, or you know most other colours so obviously I have barely any paint on the brush here and I'm just sort of going backwards and forwards so that it catches on the edges and then some of the edges where I want a little bit more paint sort of the at the ends of the tips and things like that I'll go back in and just uh, apply it with the brush brush slightly Okay, so now to start weathering that bronze, I'm going to take some Nylock Oxide and uh, again using a, just a standard brush here, I'm just going to apply this carefully to all of the bronze areas. So just picking off a few of the rivets 
and then uh, obviously some of the details where the uh, the water would collect and sort of oxidize this bronze the most so in the eye sockets top of the skull bottom of the, the uh, cross the wreath obviously as it pulls down and collects in the, the bottom of these areas here you're going to get some there now I find with nylock oxide once it dries it leaves a sort of a grey residue it's not as um, not as nice as the pulled up areas so what I tend to do is apply this and then go back in with a damp brush and just go back over the top of some of them before it fully dries and uh, that just takes back some of that um, smoky edge that you get left with um, from where the paint has moved away from uh, where it was first applied obviously as it runs down I find that gives it just a little bit more of a not so much a cleaner look but um, you just don't get that that horrible grey staining um, obviously if that's the look that you're going for then you know great there's no need for that but if you want to get rid of it or just uh, you know touch it back a little bit then before you let the paint dry too much just uh, a damp brush and go in over the top so obviously this is applied all over the the cross here as well as the uh, the spikes on top of the the arch and then the skulls and the uh, the various pieces on the front side of the wall and on top of the graves so we'll come back in just a minute and uh, we'll see where we're at with this Right, so next up I'm going to take some Athonian Camo Shade and I'm going to use this for all of the areas that I want to have a mossy look to them. Now if you're not going to apply any um, modelling flock or anything like that then I'd recommend letting this dry and then going back over it two or three times drying between each layer just to bring the strength of it up a little bit. Um, Otherwise, if like me, you're going to apply some some flocking, then you can just go with the one layer. And the idea is to cover an area slightly more or slightly larger than what you plan to flock so that you get some of that green moss staining effect away from the actual clumps of moss itself. So obviously I'm placing this the majority of areas where there would be, uh, again, water pooling. Um, so along the stonework and things like that uh, where the stone sort of dips in on itself and then obviously having it climbing up the wall between the uh, the brickwork and you can see I'm just giving it a, a light dabbing over anywhere that I want it obviously it's going to show up on the lighter areas more than it will the darker areas um, the only area I recommend not put, applying this would be over roses um, as obviously they're not going to have moss growing on them they're a living thing themselves um, so moss tends to grow more on the uh, the brickwork and things like that so we'll come back in just a minute once this is done okay so you can see here how I've gone and applied my gates and I'm now going to take some Mornfang Brown and use this to rust the gates up so I'm taking a completely beaten and abused brush here. You can see the bristles are splayed all over the place. And I'm just dabbing it across the, the gate and the areas that I want some of this rust to, to be. This will give it a bit more of a speckled effect. Um, obviously on the outside edges of the each patch. So I don't want to go too overboard with this but you know I do want to cover um, I'd say probably about a third of the gate um, proportion wise just to give it a nice bit of um, heavy rust I did clip some of the, the bars on this um, with some clippers and then bent them away from each other a couple of places I clipped um, at two points to give a, a broken gap 
so that I could get a nice rusted broken gate effect um, on these gates. Obviously, don't forget the the archway and the uh, the the frame for the gates as well. Um, you don't have to apply as much on these. Um, I tend to just go sort of around the rivets and nearer the bottom. And uh, we'll jump ahead and come back for the, the next stage of this rust effect. Okay, so next up I'm using a Reaper Bones Master Series Paint Volcanic Orange for this. This is part of their uh, Bones range. You could use any sort of uh, vibrant orange. Obviously, Games Workshop have uh, Rise of Rust, um, but I just put, I just like the the look of the orange that this gives on top of the Mornfang Brown. So again, going all over the areas that I've applied the Mornfang Brown with the what I could probably call now a stippling brush, um, but I'm not completely covering those brown areas. This is just sort of to add a little bit more of a, a a fresh rust on top of that that darker area but you do want to make sure that you do have it on all the brown areas just not covering all of the brown right so with that done we are almost finished with this model which brings us to the final stage of adding some flocking. So you can see down in the bottom here, bottom right hand corner, um, I use this heavily abused cutting mac for everything. I've got some PVA glue and I'm just adding in um, some water to that, just a couple of drops, just to thin it slightly. And now I'm going to apply this where I want the, the moss to be. So obviously that's over any of the green areas that I applied before and then I do a little bit up the the gates as well not too much with the gates just a small amount obviously over the grave gravestone there and then up the walls I'm not too worried about this drying um, it may dry a little bit on the the outer edges of what I apply um, before I get to the flock in but with PVA especially watered down you do get a few minutes drying time so you can go ahead and apply all the PVA glue and then apply your flock in one go. Okay, so you can see here I've got a tub of um, mixed coloured uh, flocking material. Um, I don't know what brand this is. This was uh, given to me by a friend. I'm just uh, dropping this over all of the, the PVA glued areas and uh, just allow it to dry a little bit and then tap it off obviously trying to get some of that back into the pot and then what I'll do is I'll leave that for about five minutes and then just blow off any excess and uh, obviously I'll hoover that up later but obviously try not to to touch it before it's dried or otherwise you'll just remove the the flock and the glue and there we have it guys the completed gateway I hope you've enjoyed today's video and I thank you ever so much for joining me if you have liked it please hit that thumbs up button and don't forget to subscribe if you're not already subscribed hit that little notification bell so you will get notifications of when new videos are uploaded. Now for Mortal Realms Monday, obviously every Monday, uh, with the exception to this coming Monday, as I am on the two weekly, or the second half of the two monthly subscription issues per month. Um, I have arranged with Hatchet to send me out my next four issues early. Um, obviously I've had to pay early for that. So I'm hoping to get them within the next week um, but it may mean that next week's Mortal Realms Monday won't be it will be the week after that so hopefully I'll have something for for you guys if there's no magazine review I'll try and get uh, maybe another 
video put up on some of the other models from the uh, premium kit one and uh, we'll see what we can get for that so thanks a lot for joining me guys take it easy and until next time keep painting those minis